In this videotape, you will see the proper setup and procedure for knurling on the lathe. Knurling is the process of impressing patterns into the surface of cylindrical workpieces. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to write down the safety procedures that are required in every machine shop, as well as the safety procedures for knurling on the lathe, write down the different types of knurling tools, and write down the procedures for setting up and knurling a diamond shape and straight pattern. When you are in the shop, you have to take some precautions that will protect you and the people around you. Wear your safety glasses. All jewelry should be removed. Roll up your sleeves and make sure your clothes fit close enough so they won't get caught in the machine. Also, you should never use a rag or a brush to clean the knurl while the workpiece is turning. The threads of the rag or the bristles of the brush could get caught in the knurl and pull the operator's hand into the machine. The knurling process produces either a diamond-shaped pattern or a straight line pattern on the surface of the workpiece. The diamond-shaped pattern improves the appearance of the workpiece and provides a better gripping surface. The straight line pattern is often used to slightly increase the diameter of a piece of work when it is to be press fitted to another part. Along with the patterns they produce, knurling tools are also classified according to their pitch. The pitch is the number of teeth contained per linear inch on the rolls. The hardened steel rolls mounted in the knurling tool are made with three different pitches. A fine pitch has 33 teeth, a medium pitch has 21 teeth, and a coarse pitch has 14 teeth. The kind of pitch used will determine how deep an impression the rolls will make on the surface of the workpiece. A fine pitch will produce a shallow impression. A medium pitch produces a deeper impression and a coarse pitch produces the deepest impression. Knurling tools come in different types. The knuckle joint type has a single pair of rolls. The revolving head type of knurling tool is fitted with three pairs of rolls. Each pair of rolls produces a different pitch. The straddle type of knurling tool has a single set of rolls but they can be adjusted to knurl on larger diameters. The knurling operation requires a consistent horizontal pressure applied across the ways of the lathe. To provide maximum support, knurling should be performed with the workpiece held between centers whenever possible. You should always use a well-lubricated dead center in the tailstock. The amount of horizontal pressure needed for the knurling operation will cause excessive wear on a live ball bearing center in the tailstock. If the headstock end of the work is held in a chuck instead of being held between centers, the horizontal force of the knurling tool will cause the work to slide into the chuck, leaving the tailstock end unsupported. This will spring the workpiece and produce a poor pattern. You are now ready to set up the workpiece for knurling. Center drill both ends of the workpiece. Holding the workpiece between centers, turn the surface to be knurled to the proper diameter. This should be done whenever possible to provide an even knurled pattern. Remove the turning tool and holder from the lathe and adjust the compound rest in a position perpendicular to the workpiece. Since the knurling operation is performed with the tool moving from tailstock to headstock, as well as from the headstock to the tailstock, this position of the compound rest provides the best setup for both directions. Next, you select the type of knurling tool which will produce the pattern and the pitch you desire. 
In this demonstration, we will use a revolving head knurling tool with a diamond-shaped pattern and a coarse pitch. Place the knurling tool in the tool post. You should take care to adjust the tool so that both rolls are evenly seated on the workpiece with the center of the knurling tool set to center height of the work. Maintaining this position, rotate the head of the tool approximately 5 to 10 degrees toward the tailstock and tighten the tool post very tightly. This slight angle allows the rolls to make a deeper starting impression. You must reset the spindle RPM to a slower speed for knurling. A good rule of thumb is to use one half the RPM used in turning. However, you should never exceed 150 RPMs. Spindle speeds in excess of 150 RPMs could cause damage to the lathe when the feed is reversed. For this demonstration, set the spindle speed at 110 RPM. Another good rule of thumb is to set the carriage feed rate between 15 thousandths and 30 thousandths inches per revolution. In this demonstration, we will use 20 thousandths inches per revolution. In this knurling operation, you will be seeing how to knurl from the end of a workpiece to a line. The length of this knurl will be 3 inches. To properly lay out the dimension for the length of the knurl, follow these steps. Turn on the power and engage the clutch. Check the longitudinal feed to be sure it is moving toward the headstock. Here you see the calipers set to mark off three inches. After placing some marking blue on the workpiece at the approximate dimension, you use the calipers to mark off the exact length of the knurl. You will notice how the line shows up clearly against the marking blue. You are now ready to start knurling. The knurling tool is set at the tailstock end of the workpiece. Place a few drops of cutting oil on the knurling surface near the end. And bring the tool in contact with the workpiece about one eighth inch from the end. Use the crossfeed handle to force the tool into the workpiece. You will have to exert a firm, steady crossfeed pressure for the tool to work effectively. Engage the longitudinal feed and allow the tool to knurl for approximately one half inch. Back the tool away from the workpiece with the crossfeed and disengage the clutch. When the work has stopped rotating, inspect it to see if you are getting the desired pattern. If you are getting a double impression, the most likely cause is that the center line of the work is not aligned with the center line of the tool. So, realign the tool and make a test run on a new position on the workpiece. If the tool is producing the correct impression, move the rolls back into position with the cross feed and engage the longitudinal feed. Keep applying drops of cutting oil to the rolls and the work surface with an oil can. Be careful not to get the spout of the oil can caught between the work surface and the knurling tool. When the leading edge of the rolls reaches the line marked on the workpiece, disengage the longitudinal feed and back the tool away from the work with the cross feed handle. Disengage the clutch to stop the workpiece. After this first cut, you must realign the knurling tool 
to take out the 5 to 10 degree angle you put in. The tool should now be set perpendicular to the work and aligned for proper tracking. Securely tighten the tool post. Engage the clutch and change the direction of the longitudinal feed so that the carriage will now move toward the tailstock. Slowly move the rolls back into the impressions on the workpiece with the cross feed, keeping the edge of the roll on the line marking the end of the knurl. You will again have to apply a firm, steady pressure by turning the cross feed handle. Engage the longitudinal feed Keep the rolls and work surface well lubricated with cutting oil. Continue knurling toward the tail stock until about one third of the width of the rolls extend over the end of the workpiece. Then, without stopping the machine, reverse the longitudinal feed to move toward the headstock again. Apply more cross feed pressure by turning the cross feed handle. Move the knurling tool away from the work. Disengage the longitudinal feed. You should periodically lubricate the tailstock center. Readjust the tail stock center and continue knurling. Allow the knurling tool to travel up to the marked line at the headstock end and again reverse direction. Keep increasing the pressure by turning the cross feed handle. This process is continued until you have the desired impression on the workpiece. At this point, you disengage the clutch to stop the workpiece. And then, clean the impressions with a brush. The diamond-shaped knurls should have fairly sharp points across the entire surface. Here you see how a proper diamond-shaped knurl should look. When the knurling is completed, you will notice that the end of the workpiece is rough. Engage the clutch and use a small file to put a small radius on the edge. This gives a more finished look and prevents possible injury to your hand. The other pattern of knurling that you will see is the straight line pattern. This pattern is usually performed on the turret lathe, since it is generally used in the assembly of parts requiring a press fit. Here you see a straddle knurling tool adjusted to fit the diameter of the workpiece. You will use the same setup and operational procedures for the straight line pattern as you did for the diamond shape pattern. In knurling the straight line pattern, you will usually have to make fewer passes. Here you see a completed straight line pattern knurl made on a lathe. Let's review the material covered in this videotape. Knurling is used to improve the appearance of the surface of a workpiece. Diamond shaped knurls provide for better gripping and straight line knurls slightly increase the diameter of the work for press fitting. Knurling tools are classified by types, knuckle joint, revolving head, and straddle. By pitch, fine, medium, and coarse. And by pattern, diamond shape, and straight. Knurling should be performed between centers whenever possible. 
This method of holding the workpiece provides the best support to withstand the horizontal pressure applied by the knurling tool. You have now seen the process of making a diamond shape and straight line knurl. Thank you.